God damn it, Duffy. You lousy son of a bitch. I <laughs> think you got something wrong here. I'm not Duffy. You tell Duffy we're after him. And we're not going to forget this. When we find him, we're going to rip his balls off. <sighs> if we can find them. Welcome to Hello, This is the Doom Show. I am Richard. Folks, I am in a bunker, and I'm talking to Jeffrey in his bunker. Hello, Jeffrey. Uh, well, I have wandered out from the bunker, but I want you to know that I am covered head to toe in trash bags, so I think <laughs> it should be okay. <laughs> Hooray! So, folks, trigger warning. <laughs> if you're scared of movies with pandemics, and by pandemics, I mean <laughs> at least six people catch a disease then may want to listen to a different show we're talking about primal rage from 1988 uh directed by uh is it vittorio rimbaldi uh it, indeed it is wow it, it takes a village of rimbaldis to <laughs> spread a disease uh, yes uh this movie is also called rage furia primitiva uh it was it has Freaking. a different title in a trailer that you can find on YouTube as well. I can't what remember what it, I can't remember what it translated to. It was very vague, though. Let's see. It's I didn't probably, look for a trailer. I, there is one. It's very. <laughs> it's like a VHS trailer that's like all fucked up, so it does not look good. Um, Perfect. But it does exist. As long as it's in English. It it is, but it's got a lot of audio defects. That make it sound quite bad. All right, I'm grabbing. I'm playing it right now, folks. Enjoy whatever this thing is. I just found just now in real time. Cover your ears. Oh my god! Not too. I think it's really quiet. So maybe uncover your groin. <laughs> uncover do you your mean? sores. Your sars? Don't say sars. <laughs> Don't say H one N one. New crop of prime freshmen. It is. We need some fresh party meat. <laughs> he and his buddies throw some interesting bashes. If you're of sex. <laughs> Duffy. It's me, Sam. <laughs> going to be any autopsy. It's over. What's the sweetest thing in life? What? Revenge. Don't touch a nightmare. I want to drop out and go home. Kill me! So here we are being very topical for a change with the doom show more importantly though we're getting back to italian horror oh my god italian by way of america right i mean this is filmed in america yes dude with, yes it doesn't even have post-sync dubbing right it's no this is live sound it's live 
Damn. Yeah, this we're in the post uh, dubbing era of of Italian horror, and I feel like Italian actors must have been pretty pissed off by this point because there's not a single, to my knowledge, Italian actor in this movie. It's all mm-hmm. Americans. Brutal. And and Bo Svensson, whatever Bo Svensson is. <laughs> Um, I believe, if we remember correctly, he is vaguely Eastern European. <laughs> Very rude. <laughs> rude. So yeah, this was made around the same time as Umberto Lenzi's masterpiece, Nightmare Beach. Which Vittorio Rambaldi has a story credit on. Wow. Now, is Vittorio, is he Carlo's son? son? According to yeah, okay. uh, good old Spaghetti Nightmares, mm. it's his son. Should have thought to look, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. So is he like a fail son? Because he didn't really do much. <laughs> <laughs> he succeeded in making this. He made one other movie that I, that I've like seen the poster of before. It's called Decoy from 1995, an action movie with Peter Weller and Robert Patrick. Um, oh, look, wow. Yeah. <laughs> I love the, the IMDb description, which is Baxter and Travis are two guys hired to protect a millionaire's daughter from bad guys. <laughs> From bad guys. You know, just general, generic, run-of-the-mill bad guys. Well, you know, I wouldn't want them any other way. I wouldn't want them to have, like, traits that would make them, like, distinguishable from other bad guys. Are you a bad enough dude to threaten a millionaire's daughter? (laughs) Question mark? (laughs) No. No. So, I found the VHS tape for the uh, beautiful Warner uh, home video. I own that VHS tape. Holy shit, are you serious? Because yeah. that's how I first saw this movie. Is it? And uh, Yeah. One of the really like uh, condescending reviews on uh, IMDb for this was like, Warner Brothers, oh, like, they don't think they even looked at this before they put it out, whatever. I mean, I have to say, it is kind of absolutely bizarre to me that Warner Brothers yes. did put this out. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a little weird. You know, spoiler, I love it, but it doesn't really fit with their brand. They don't have the rights anymore um, because this was put out on DVD momentarily by Code Red like 10 years ago or so. Really? So they don't, I mean, they definitely, I think, distributed it, but I don't think they have it because, you know, they keep stuff okay. that they've produced on lock. Yeah, because I asked you, I think I asked you when we were talking about doing this, if somebody else other than Code Red had put this out, and you were like, uh, no. No. Damn it. So we're talking to the five people who have this. We will always have the Warner Brothers home video (laughs) VHS release. Hey, it's not a bad tape, if I recall correctly. No. It's got Bo Svensson on the the spine. And right above his, his face, it says digitally processed but you can't see his rat tail so what the fuck <laughs> spoiler oh sorry sorry uh <laughs> rude uh do you want to go ahead and uh, read the back read the plot synopsis to us oh i sure will it's quite long he tried to create life but the side effects were murder what's going on behind the locked doors of university's neuro- neurophysiology lab <laughs> gonzo student journalist frank duffy would give anything to find out but giving his life to do so is something duffy never bargained for primal rage is the shocking story of science gone haywire of unchecked experimentation catapulted into uncalculable nightmare <laughs> Bo Spenson. Noted portrayer of Buford Pusser <laughs> in two Walking Tall films. <laughs> Plays faculty member Dr. Etheridge, who believes he can jolt dead brain cells back to life. Desperate for corporate funding, he's thrown caution to the winds and reaped a deadly harvest. So he's a farmer <laughs> now? <laughs> this is so... Uh, we're halfway through it. Whoa. Patrick Lowe and Cheryl Arut play Sam and Lauren. <laughs> Collegians, how about Col- students, confronted uh, by a peril not covered in classrooms. What? They're now majoring in survival, trying to stop the unspeakable horror that's turned their pale Duffy, Mitch Watson, into a rampaging fiend. <laughs> Parentheses, the amazing visual effects are by E.T., the extraterrestrial Academy Accord winner, Carl Rambaldi. Most students don't yet know about the horror in their midst. If they did, they'd skip the school's Halloween ball 
At this monster mash, some partygoers could win best costume without dressing up. And they don't <laughs> care about whatever dance is the latest rage. They have their own death step. Call it the primal rage. Oh my god. You know what that last bit reminds me of is a freaking <laughs> 80s horror fiction cover like the the plot synopsis from a freaking tour horror book it's great i, I love mean that. honestly uh, yeah i mean th- this has the same level of engagement with a uh editor that that uh any of those uh zebra horror paperbacks yeah. did in the yes. 80s and 90s yeah very nice honestly love it that's the one of the best backs of a uh vhs tape i've ever seen oh, thank you thank you for performing and i didn't realize it was like a novel digitally processed (laughs) digitally 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 (laughs) this is miami in winter uh this movie when it opens because liette and i know if you're looking at someone in miami and they're wearing sweaters it is winter in miami it is not summer like this like lack of short shorts like 80s -hmm. like cut off jeans that show testicles popping out this is like seriously miami in winter i mean i've only been to florida once I'm sorry. Uh, I know you. You live there. You oh, you boy. live and breathe it. You're acclimated to it. Yes. The second I got off the plane, revise that. The second I left the airport, <laughs> I just felt a crushing weight of heat encompass my body. It yep. was intense, and I, I've never recovered. I live in Tampa, which is not that bad. Mm-hmm. I used to live in Jupiter, Florida, which is three hours south from here. Mm-hmm. It is so much worse. It is so much worse, but being near any ocean is good. It was Florida. like a it was like a wet heat. Oh, like I've been to California and there was like a dry heat. This was yeah. a wet heat. It just like immediately I felt damp and yep. excruciatingly hot. That's how it is all the time. And this movie is shot at FIU, so they're in Miami, so it's even worse. So this is a real campus. Yes. Oh yeah. Very real. Um, because it looks fake. <laughs> <laughs> All Florida campuses look fake, especially if they have a lot of architecture from the 70s, like my college does. <laughs> yeah, I feel like one of the buildings, I, I can't remember what exactly it said outside, uh, <laughs> but I feel like it had like some, some letters tacked on the outside of it said like, college happens here. <laughs> Please believe us. Oh, and this is a secret Halloween movie. God bless America. I, I was like, dude, should we save this? And you're like... Uh, no, it's not that big of a deal in this movie. Yeah, it is it's, very marginally. It, well, it, it is a nice party. They do they do it right. There's a lot of partiers. It's an excellent costume cheap. party. Yes. Um, like, and there are some zoom-ins on some jack-o'-lanterns. But, you know, it's less of a Halloween movie than the Halloween Town movies we talked about, which oh, is yes, uh, not to its benefit. <laughs> pitiful that's just that's just a pitiful thing to happen especially <laughs> that first halloween town movie oh boy mm-hmm. shame for shame laguna entertainment weirdly we start off at a lagoon i don't know does hey. florida have lagoons i don't know we start on an image of uh of our hero his name is uh sam match correct sam nash nash oh. we thought he was saying sam ash like the guitar store i heard m-a-t-c-h match Oh my god, well, mm. only IMDb guy? knows for not certain. His name is uh, Patrick Lowe. Yeah, famous, he- famous for being the brother of Rob Lowe. <laughs> is he really? No. Okay. <laughs> I mean, he, he almost looks the part. Yeah, why not? He is in Slumber Party Massacre 2. Holy shit. What? He played Matt. Matt, who is fourth credited on IMDb. Dude, I gotta rewatch that. I've only seen it the one time. Really? I mean, I love it, but it's like all those mm-hmm. movies I keep putting off because I'm so excited about it. And also, but you've seen um, Slumber Party Massacre like a hundred times. Yeah, I know. Rumor has it that uh, freaking Simon and I are gonna do that series. Oh, very nice. We shall see. We shall see. Only time will tell. I like part two the I most. Loved. Nice. I loved part two. It's so good. Yeah. Girl, girl group. Crazy, and Rock it's band. like. The easiest movie you can watch in like 68 minutes. So, And it has a killer soundtrack. So good. Did you say a killer soundtrack? Yeah. Uh, wow. Driller, driller killer soundtrack. Yeah. Wow. wow. Um, other than that, he was in one episode of Quantum Leap and a couple episodes of a TV <laughs> show called Generations. Yeah, Star Trek The Next Generations. 
which I've never heard of. Well, Soap opera good. about two families, one black Ooh. and one white. 470 episodes. Unfortunately, uh, he was only in three. Wow. And in the- one of the episodes, he was credit only, which means he did not actually appear in the episode. <laughs> Man, they filmed it for generations with that many episodes. Holy shit. Yeah. This guy's wow. not a bad actor. It's, no, he's all right. Yeah, he's, that's he's the thing. Him. A lot of this cast is pretty good. They're pretty yeah. good. He's running around the campus being the BMOC big moron on campus. He's like riding his bike and taking pictures. <laughs> he looks like he's going to die because he's not paying attention to riding a bike or f- taking pictures. He's not really doing either. It's just mm-hmm. funny. We first see him hang out with some ducks at the lake, and then he's like, you oh know, riding God. his moped past some aerobics, some like open air aerobics. <laughs> my favorite moment is when he takes, you know, we get some real nice images of campus life. There's a couple making out in the shade on the grass as yes. a riding lawnmower rolls by about three <laughs> feet away from them. Oh, and those are Muscovy ducks, by the way. We have those exact Ooh, ducks here in Tampa. So Muscovy ducks. This movie felt very familiar to me. So, yeah, I mean, he's running, he's like, I said running, but he's, he is driving his moped around, just willy nilly taking snapshots. Um, <laughs> like, he's not, he's not focused, like, this is a manual camera. He's not focusing the lens. He's just, these, these things when he develops them, they're going to look like shit. Um, but he's like, he's also at the same time, like, making finger guns at people who are hanging out. Oh, he's, brother. We can tell he's just the man of campus. Not the big one. One of the men on campus. He is a man on campus. Nobody can deny it. We're introduced to our other uh, lead here, which is Lauren Daly. And uh, Lauren Daly is played by Cheryl Arutt, who has definitely moved on with her career into something. Has she? Yeah, dude. She's She has 10 credits for acting, and then she has 25 credits for herself. Uh, she's oh. an Access Hollywood person. Oh, she's a CNN psychological news. expert, <clears throat> expert yep, she, forensic psychologist. Wow, she's she young. went to college, y'all. She went to well, real college. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, but we've seen her go to college in this movie. And... <laughs> no, I said real college. Nothing in Florida. Well, she's an episode of Murder. She wrote so that's hot. And Brad Charles in charge. Her. Yeah, Charles in charge in the magical world of Disney. Holy crap. That's so great. Uh, she reminds me of somebody. She's got sort of a a young Nicole Kidman-ish look. but She's got that red hair, you know? Yeah, um, kind of, you know, she seems like she looks more famous than she is. That's fair. She's um, having her car towed because, as <laughs> usual, the only thing that matters on a college campus is parking. If you don't have a fucking parking spot... Your life is over. So she's Truer having her words car have towed. Not been said, yeah. <laughs> this this callous tow truck driver who tells her it's a red ass world, <clears throat> honey baby. Gotta clear the, clarify this because it, it happens again later on, and I, I went back and listened to it multiple times. Oh please, what does he say? Red ass world. R E D hyphen A S S world. Yes. Red ass. What does that mean? Is that like referring to like a baboon's ass? Like it's a baboon's oh ass Oh my world? god. <laughs> I just thought of spankings because I'm a pervert. You think of monkeys because of bestiality. <laughs> I think of monkeys because there's it's... monkeys in this movie. Oh, is there a monkey in this? I didn't a... I didn't watch it. <laughs> I watched I watched uh Primal Fear with uh oh, with Richard no. Gere and uh, Ed oh, Norton, no. so did you know that that Edward Norton was faking it that whole time? Dude, spoilers! Oh, you mean faking his orgasms with Richard Gere? <laughs> I didn't, but now I do. Now we all do. He saves her from this, yes. right? From the Pepe towing, pe- <laughs> Pepe towing service. Oh no, it's Man. not Pepe from uh, freaking Bloody Moon, is it? No, Pepe's from Ghost House, isn't he? You should believe in ghosts, pea brain. Which, if I'm not wrong, is a 1988 film. Oh my god. How, how different these films are, considering... I'm telling here. you. I was only inside for a minute. I had to drop something off. Red-ass world, honey baby. 
uh, I do need to point out something that the credits do reveal to us um, that I think is really important is going to underscore literally much of this film is that the soundtrack or well, at least the music the score is by Claudio Simonetti of Goblin um, wow. and his music is largely like this like tinkly keyboard music or synth music but also at various points at like the high tension moments he is just straight up ripping off his own dawn of the dead score nice with just like bigger bigger guitars but it's the it's that the main distinctive theme from dawn of the dead it's nearly identical it's honestly kind of shameful my favorite thing is when it goes into full-on thrash metal beats (laughs) like they just set the drum machine as fast as it'll go Mm -hmm. and it just sounds like thrash metal and then they actually use some like heavy metal on the soundtrack later it's all perfect we do see a number of things happening on this campus uh, before we arrive at uh the newspaper yes um like we see a competitive tug of war on the quad oh i don't like that scene which is apparently a thing that college-age students do i don't like that never been aware we also have uh you know because sam nash nash is a reporter so you know for the paper the school paper the hard-hitting gonzo journalism school paper uh he goes and visits the african festivities 88 event (laughs) on campus yes which there are some some uh black students in attendance but like the closing shot of it is some white girls walking out onto the gymnasium floor to do some belly dancing it appears oh my god The, the whole audience looks really bored but the black people look the most born. They're like, this is not good. Let's, let's, uh, why don't we have actual Africans? You know, yeah, this would that, be good. That'd be nice. Um, <laughs> so Sam Nash goes back to, uh, the paper. Do you remember the paper's name? The, uh, Montgomery like, Bugler. <laughs> I think it's like no. the free independent or something. It's some, it's, oh no, no, it's the Lauren name. Daly. <laughs> that's, that's the name. <laughs> It took me a second, but uh, very good, very good. Uh, for those at home, that is the name of our uh, heroine in this film. That's her full name. So there he is accosted by a mob of women who are wanting to rip his testicle off, testicles off. Yes. If, if they can find them, because they think he is, quote, the slime ball Duffy. Oh, um, no, but no. he is not Duffy. No, Duffy is the Hunter S. Thompson of this newspaper. Oh, God. <laughs> he, he is. I would describe him as looking like like if a lost boy mated with a frog brother. <laughs> the, the S in Hunter S. Thompson is for sweating. <laughs> yeah, he's Slimy. always sweating. Even before he's diseased, he's sweating. Sleazy. <laughs> he is uh, um, nearly near dark. He's not quite there. Uh <laughs> <laughs> his name is Mitch Watson, playing the character Frank Duffy. He is... I'm looking at his IMDb right now. Yes. Whoa! Whoa. What uh, the heck? He's got an interesting career. He was I agree. a producer on Scooby-Doo Mystery, Mystery Incorporated. Great uh, show. Oh my co- god. Co- co-host Brad's favorite television program. Absolutely. She wrote, and I also love it. It's great. The best Scooby-Doo that there exists. But also he produced Duckman and uh, some, it looks like Netflix Kung Fu Panda spinoff things. All Hail King Julian. What is Man. that? I have no idea. Oh, he also wrote for, oh my goodness. This guy's got a cool career. He wrote for uh, Spooksville, which is a Christopher Pike children's series. It was like his answer to Goosebumps. Uh, and it was made into a TV show at one point. Really? Yeah. So many interesting things. He's mostly been involved, it seems, with like children's stuff and animation. His acting career, not much. No, no. He's done He's done a quite a bit of voice work for those uh, cartoons that he's worked on, including this Scooby-Doo Mystery Incorporated. He played Phantom Pledge <laughs> in something called Rush Week. Have you not seen Rush Week? No, I've I've heard of it, I think. Yeah, I watched it. Um, Ooh, think, the VHS cover is hot. I like that. Yeah, it was um, not great. Uh, but, you know, it's a college set slasher movie. so Not coming soon to Hello, This is the Doom Show. Yeah, you know, it's, it's fine. It's fine. It's, it's a movie that we would enjoy. Uh, ah. 
uh, maybe, maybe not, not maybe we not, on this show, but yeah, just not show material. But like when we're when we're lying on a couch, half half conscious, we would enjoy. Yeah, mostly clothed. I understand. Uh, well, partially, partially speak clothed. For, speak for yourself. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so Slimeball Duffy apparently he wrote about these these this blonde mob minoring in solicitation. I guess he like wrote an article about how he thinks they're sluts or something. Oh. Bad Duffy. Duffy's that's a bad not, that's man. That's not nice. He sucks. Yeah. Well, he's going to get his balls ripped off, so it's, <laughs> it's fine. The sooner the better. Yeah. <laughs> it's around this time after uh, Sam Nash covers for Duffy as he's hiding under a desk so he doesn't get his balls ripped off yet, that we also find out the illicit activities, not the solicitation, but the other illicit activities that are going on on this campus involving one Bo Svensson. Holy uh, shit. The term for what he's doing here in his lab is a uh, psychoplasmic regeneration, which Ooh. I guess means regrowing brain cells. That's yeah, we're going to be we're going to be pseudo scientific, very very pseudo scientific today. Oh, for sure. Uh, in a way that I don't even understand, but that's fine. I mean, we usually don't understand. Brain cells injected into monkey. That's what I said in my notes. <laughs> <laughs> uh excuse me into puppet monkey oh, okay okay so we do have a monkey it is there not... is a real monkey yeah yes yeah. it doesn't look like it's uh hurt in any way it definitely looks like they pissed it off they made this monkey very angry which isn't cool but for the gory bits oh they have the shittiest puppet monkey <laughs> that looks like a dog it's so cute I, I think they, I think they only have the real monkey for the one scene later. I mean, here yeah. I think it's a it's a puppet throughout. What is yeah. what is the movie where the the baboon terrorizes a laboratory? A laboratory. So there Shockma? are multiple movies that are yeah. Shockma is one. I mean that's. <laughs> Yeah. Shakma is so good. <laughs> I've never Sh- seen it. I just know what it is. Oh, really? Oh, my God. I love Shakma. <laughs> Shakma has the best trailer that's ever been, ex- ever been cut, <laughs> where it just has this, this voiceover narrative going, Shakma. <laughs> you, could, you could cut together Shakma and Gappa, you know, if you want oh, to. Oh, shit. And Spasmo, yeah. Shakma, Shakma. Gappa, Spasmo. <laughs> All right, I'm on it. Gappa. In that movie, Roddy McDowell uh, phones, uh, excuse me, he walkie talkies in his performance. Uh, <laughs> oh my God. I think they're playing like D&D, sort of. They're playing like some sort of weird game in this like college lab- laboratory campus buildings with when the killer monkey runs around. There's so many good killer monkey movies in horror. And my favorite is Link. Link is good. I remember being really terrified and like it's it's like a it's like a genuinely smart movie if I recall correctly. Uh sure. <laughs> I mean, I was, you know, 13 when I watched it, so it made yeah. me feel smart. I mean, there's there's perhaps no better scene in film history. Cin- excuse me. Cinema history than the moment where the abnormally scientifically altered smart monkey is wearing pants <laughs> and walks into a bathroom on Elizabeth Shue, who is uh, nude, uh, get just out of a shower, and they just stand and stare at each other for a moment. <laughs> it's a, it's a moment. That I'd sounds say. like like highbrow entertainment to me. So agreed, agreed. <laughs> Parent stamp is in it, so you know it's good. Hey, that's it. That's it. He's like a college course and an actor. <laughs> well, Terrence Stamp is not in this movie. Instead, we've got Bo Svensson. <laughs> <laughs> so, folks at home, if you've been uh, doing your, your uh, Hello, This is the Doom show research, like I know you have, about a billion years ago, uh, Jeffrey and I covered Beyond the Door 3, a.k.a. Amok Train. And much joy was had because freaking Bo Svensson is hilarious in that he, one. He had a great scarf in that one. Um, oh you boy. may also remember him from uh, the Walking Tall films where he played <laughs> Buford P- P- Pusser? <laughs> Pusser? Yeah, I've, I know those exist. I always mix those up with uh, Billy Jack. Uh, I don't I've know why. S- I've not seen the original Walking Tall films, but I have seen the remake with The Rock and Johnny Knoxville. Oh, boy. It was good. Uh, well, of course. Like, it's about 70 minutes long. It is in and out, and uh, there's a lot of walking tall in that There's movie. some sequels to that, you know, to that remake. 
Is there really? Walking Tall, The Payback. Who's in that? Kevin Sorbo. Oh, no. Oh, yes. <laughs> it's a bit of a downgrade. <laughs> That's a, was it the uh, the great value? <laughs> <laughs> great value, digitally produced. No, oh, what was it? I no. forgot already. Digitally processed. <laughs> digitally processed. So Bo Svensson here is, he is, what's his name in this film? Uh, he is a doctor, right? So yeah, he's regrowing brain cells, which makes sense because he's already mastered growing rat tails. Oh no. He has a rat tail in this movie. That is a choice. That is a a a uh, a choice by an actor to do that. That's brilliant. I mean, is it really a rat tail like technically or is it just like the most pathetic ponytail? Ah, uh, how dare you? Or is it is it a mullet that has been restrained? <laughs> I mean, I don't even know how you could contain one, but yeah, that's I guess that's it. <sighs> well, it's a look. It is definitely a look. The sunglasses man wants to cut the funding for the project, mm-hmm. and he's begging. Uh, Bo Svensson is begging him not to cut it. Desperate man in desperate circumstances, so he's going to do some crimes real soon. Holy shit. Uh, We connect back with Lauren, who meets her new roommate, the formerly pregnant Debbie. Oh, boy. uh, Who, uh, caution here, prepare yourself. She had an abortion. Oh, 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 speaking of triggers, dude, you can't talk about that subject. Uh, She is played by one Sarah Buxton, who has... Uh, a fairly, you know, she has a, a larger filmography than, yeah, dude. than most people in this movie outside of Bo Svensson. <laughs> I recognize her. Nightmare uh, Beach. Yeah, she's in Nightmare Beach. She's in Nightmare for, Beach. From Amazing. the same year. Crazy. Yeah, so I guess they just cast her in both. Um, she's also in, what else is she in? She's in Less Than Zero. Less Than Zero. Wow. An, an episode of Freddy's Nightmares. Uh, Rock and Roll High School Forever. Holy uh, shit. Don't tell mom the babysitter's dead. That's, see, classic career here. An episode of Silk Stockings. Oh my god, this is the greatest thing ever. So she was on two or three major frickin' uh, soap operas. Mm-hmm. So she was on something called Sunset Beach for like 500 episodes. I've never she was heard on, of that. Yeah, same. Sunset she was on The Bold Beach. and the Beautiful for like almost 200 wow. episodes. But then she was on Days of Our Lives, and her name, her character's name, was Crystal Galore. Was she a porn star? Was she supposed to be a porn star on that? Because Crystal Galore? Holy well, shit. Well, what I'm going to suggest is that you go and you start <coughs> watching Days of Our Lives from the beginning. Yes. And you understood. wait until you get to episode, what, uh, 900, <laughs> 9,800. No, I'll, oh, I'll nine, call you in, in a month. I'll be like, Jeffrey, they cured the virus, but I'm still watching the black and white episodes. I got to go back to work. <laughs> Listen, we got time. Man. Yeah. So she's she's, she's great. Sarah Buxton. I love her. She's great. Um, she's really great in this movie. I, I really like her character. She is. I think, I mean, I, rem- I remember when I watched this, or maybe it was the other way around. Maybe I remember her from this and she made an impression and then I watched Nightmare Beach and I was like, oh, she's in that too. Yep. Um, but she's very good in this movie, for sure. Um, we also meet, uh, what's her name? Uh, Lauren's other roommate, which is an elf plush uh, <laughs> on her nightside table with oh a God. little note on it that says, uh, I heart Lauren. Holy shit. So she, yeah, she walks in and Debbie is rummaging through the closets and she's like, oh, hi, who are you? And I'm like, I'm your roommate. Where have you been? And they drop the whole... Uh, freaking uh abortion thing and she's like oh i've never met anyone who would admit to something like that before and debbie says welcome to the real world road rules (laughs) challenge (laughs) that still exists fuck that's why the freaking coronavirus exists because of uh, the challenge on MTV. Yeah, yeah I, I think that's probably right. That is, uh, you know, I was thinking it was maybe uh, Sam Nash at the beginning hanging out with those ducks. I was thinking maybe he was patient zero. But now I think it's anybody who's been on the challenge. Exactly. Uh, so in this apartment, uh, aside from, from good old Alf, 
Uh, there's a tasteful David poster. There's a statue of David poster. They've covered the junk. <laughs> It was so undies, yeah. Yep, there's a there's a James Bond poster, which, according to the trivia, is for the living daylights. Yeah, it's Timothy Dalton Bond, yeah. And there's some other things I couldn't quite place. There's a lot of cool, mm, uh, there's, well, not cool, a lot of strange set uh, design work. There's a Western star. I can't tell exactly who it is. <laughs> is it Gary Cooper? I don't know. I think it's Gary Cooper. I, I think That was is. my first thought, yeah. yeah. Um, the best one is in the bathroom of this Oh, I guess is it is God. is this student housing or is it off campus house? I mean, it feels they are like definitely it's gotta be student, off campus, which is weird that she doesn't know that she has a new roommate. Um, like yeah. Roommate. Anyway, uh, in the bathroom on the back of the bathroom door is a uh, <laughs> a Spuds McKenzie um, watching you poster naked and poop. Yeah, that's not right. He's surfing on a surfboard, and it says "Hang 20. <laughs> <laughs> which i just got i'm such an idiot oh because dogs have 25 feet i understand shit <laughs> no d- you stupid dogs have 20 lives did you know <laughs> oh spuds mckenzie never use up your lives please So we connect back with um, Duffy and Sam at a local uh, establishment of ill repute, uh, where we have in quick succession a number of very memorable catchphrases. Uh, they're talking about uh, Bo Svensson at his laboratory, uh, quote unquote, humping his monkeys. <laughs> Um, because they want to get the story about what's going on on their campus, which is, you know, fair. We have some other great lines here, uh, which is, this one's one to live by. Quote, a turd is a turd is a turd. Uh, Well, turd is a turd is a turd, right? I'll drink to that. (laughs) Um, and Sam at one point accuses Duffy of only seeing one color. Quote, shit brown. (laughs) This guy's a real poop fiends. Uh, yeah, there's uh, poop is a running theme. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so basically, Duffy is encouraging Sam to break into Bo Svensson's laboratory uh, while at the same time poisoning a drunk at the bar. <laughs> oh, my God. That's not nice. <laughs> Definitely not nice. And uh, Duffy, when he realizes Sam is not going to do it, he decides that he is going to do it himself. Um, because he feels like it's not against the law to do so. Um, although he does believe that picking your nose in public is against the law. So Duffy is, I mean, I think he's ill-informed at, at the bare minimum. Yes. So he goes to that night to break into uh, Svensson's laboratory. And when he first breaks in, he describes the uh, the set decoration by saying that uh, the decor is, uh, quote, high-tech Frankenstein, which what? I guess is like in contrast to like analog Frankenstein or like steampunk Frankenstein. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it just looks Frankenstein to me, but okay. Oh, man, you, you peel back one of those uh, ceiling tiles and you just see gears and little whistles letting steam out <laughs> so he uh he basically makes this monkey's very bad life even worse oh god by you know flashing bright lights in his face this is an agitated monkey because i don't think we've mentioned it but the uh the, the brain the brain cell re- regeneration uh experiments didn't go so well no but it's turned this monkey into a rage fueled beastie uh, you know, it happens. A turd is a turd is a turd, a my turd friend. Turd is a turd is a turd. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a red ass world. Uh, <laughs> it's a red ass baboon world. Oh man, when the monkey breaks out after uh, he gets severely pissed off by stupid ass Duffy, uh, the music goes completely bonkers. Oh my god. And then he turns into a bear, a bear dog, and the bear dog puppet creature and bites Duffy, thank <laughs> God. 
And then it runs outside and immediately gets, like, hit by a police car. Yes. And they accuse it of attacking the car. And I'm like, you fucking ran it over. Specifically, they accuse it of attacking a car like a, quote, mad dog. <laughs> it's a mad monkey, you fucking dunces. Oh, they're specious. <laughs> I don't like that. You know, I think that's what they are. Oh, this scene is so funny. Oh, my God. I'm so glad that it's so obvious this monkey, other than being harassed in its cage and <laughs> jumping around, wasn't hurt in any way because I just laughed and laughed. <laughs> They had the monkey for three hours of filming. They had to get the most <laughs> yes. they could get. And then that monkey went to heaven. Oh my god. That's a very good reference to the band called Nirvana. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> you got it! <laughs> this monkey's gone to heaven. Uh, this monkey's in utero. Did you say in utero? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Speaking of abortions... This monkey's been bleached. <laughs> oh, brother. We uh, then head to class uh, <laughs> with the most realistic uh, college professor I've ever seen. He is the most bland and affectless goon. He looks like, <laughs> oh my God. He's just got like this perfectly, like he, he almost looks like a cone head yeah. with, with like a perfect, like, three quarters nest of hair circling that chrome dome and he yeah just completely without affect uh so bland he has this great line i i took a moment to write it down that said no come on it was on your homework assignment he is not getting through to these fucking kids he's also a total lech as we see yes. and as is uh made clear to us he's staring at the uh short oh here's here's those uh short well it's a short skirt but same thing uh the floridian legs you have told us about oh, they're he's, all uh, real yeah he's staring at the legs of this uh student who uh he's going to be taken out on a date a little bit later but the most important thing is that debbie comes in uh at one point late to this class and is able to solve the math problem that nobody else uh is able to because she's a math genius she she solves the longitudinal of the inverse integer of the trapezoid listen she's got an iq of 184 uh wow yeah it's really high i i mean i don't put much stock in 184 excuse me in the intelligence quotient that's what it's called right that's just because you're jealous 184 is, like, extremely high. You don't think a woman can be smart, you fucking asshole? Uh, it's more just like, I don't know if anybody can be that smart. Oh, okay. That's I don't really know. That's really smart. I know that, uh, everyone's smarter than me. <laughs> okay, okay. So I need to, I looked this up, and I'm glad okay. that I did. Because the maximum IQ score that is currently assigned is 160. <laughs> So she is beyond genius level. She is smarter than Einstein, who was wow. a 160. That explains why she's really into <laughs> Duffy later. Yeah, because... Uh, Smart girls got good taste in dudes. Holy moly. The, the funniest thing is that in the scene after she's revealed her uh, imaginary IQ score, Lauren says, but you don't look... Meaning, you know, you don't look smart. Uh, don't look like a nerd. Holy shit. This is so fun. Oh my god. <laughs> <sighs> After class, we get our frat boys, our trio of pieces of shit. These are our villains, like our, our outright villains. I mean, the, the monkey disease is, a, is the most villainous thing, but yeah. well, I mean, these villains are the ones. Uh, they're led by a man named Lovejoy, which is ironic because anyone who's ever made love to him has certainly never had any joy. Uh, no. Uh, this is played by someone named Doug Sloan, who, uh, he acted a little bit, but mainly he's a freaking animal trainer, horse wrangler, and... Stuntman, it looks like. Yeah. He did some stunts for Hannibal. What Not the that? show, but the, the film. Interesting. Classic film. Oh my god. Well, That's film. A, it is a film. We found out something. Lovejoy is terrible. He's hilariously terrible until he becomes rapey terrible. And you're like, oh. And then he's like, wow, I didn't think he could get worse. And then he does. Hey, bud, what's shaking? A new crop of prime freshman titties. We need some fresh party meat. 
But he's hitting on the girls, and uh, good old Sam Nash breaks it up. Well, this is the weirdest thing, because he is like, he's walked up to Lauren and, uh, what's her name? Debbie. To pretend like he's doing a campus survey. And Sam Nash comes over and apparently he's like heard about this either secondhand or he's observed it firsthand about like the questions that are asked in the survey. And apparently like Lovejoy builds up to asking about like, are you wearing panties? And apparently this works. This is like, this is a strategy that's worked in the past where it has uh, helped him initiate uh, group sex or as I think we see later on, uh, possibly, you know, uh, sexual assault uh, uh. with uh, him and his uh, frat bros, which is weird. Like that this is a thing that works for him. His, uh, his line of questioning. He's just so charming and so good looking. He, he looks like, I don't know what he looks like. It looks like a bag of shit. <laughs> oh fair. My God. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, well, as Sam Nash tells Lauren after the fact, you know, don't let these ivy walls fool you. This place is a jungle. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, fair enough, because it has the same sort of diseases that uh, <laughs> rage through a jungle. Yeah. Uh, so this is 28 days later, the prequel, this is 28 years before. I mean, it really is. Well, is it really that long? Come on. I don't know. I don't know time. I don't remember when 28 days later came out. 2001? Uh, Do you want to say 2001? Huh? Who knows? Who knows? It came out. <laughs> research. Uh, research. Uh, we don't do it. Why, why bother? Uh, Sam Nash goes to visit Duffy, who is sick. Now this is disgusting. Well, Duffy, like, where does Duffy live? This is, again, definitely not campus house. No. <clears throat> this is like his his grandmother has passed away and, and foolishly left him her house, and he didn't deserve it, because it's a fucking pigsty. It's, yeah, it's very dark. There's lots of unfinished wood. Um, there's a medicine cabinet that just has some, like, uh, painkillers and an opened can of beer inside. <laughs> This is not a uh, not a nice place. So he's telling Duffy that they have a double date. And I'm like, what? So he actually thinks it's a good idea to go out with Lauren and Debbie. And as his fantastic pick for Debbie's date, he's going to bring his trashy friend. Well, weirdly enough, it works out perfectly. Because though he wow. is sweating like a fiend he sur- and, and, and pissing like someone who has had a few too many medicine cabinet beers, uh, <laughs> Duffy is able to charm Debbie quite well. Well, he, he before he goes, he's, we see his wound from the monkey bite yeah. looking all gnarly. So he pours some disinfectant on it. And by disinfectant, I mean like old Milwaukee or some yeah, shit. It's, it's a, Whatever you know. Coors Light. I don't even remember. It's like a natty ice. <laughs> <laughs> the nastiest beer you can imagine. Oh no! <laughs> uh, they were all out of Schlitz. It's <laughs> terrible. What's more natural than natural light? Back at the lab, uh, Doctor is watching the tape. Uh, they had security tape, and he gets to see a very beautifully shot scene on tape of the monkey attacking our buddy Duffy. And so he's like, "Aha! I'm a scientist." <laughs> He's like Orson Welles in those uh, those wine commercials. <laughs> oh, oh. oh my God! Yes, he is. Ah, the French champagne. But the sober-ish <laughs> scientist. Uh huh. So they the the double daters go out to the bar and they're jamming to some tunes mm-hmm. at this terrible bar. But the, 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 the funny thing is, instead of the girls going pee together so they can talk about the boys, frickin' Nash and Duffy go pee together so they can gossip about the girls yeah. and uh, pee on each other. <laughs> you pee on me, I pee on you. <laughs> Chris Cross. marking their tarots. Oh! That's, <laughs> that's, that's my remake of Strangers on a Train. <laughs> Crisscross, applesauce. You pee on me, I pee on you. Even Stevens. Uh, they're marking their territory, which is each other. Uh, Duffy is able to really charm Debbie in this scene by oh, yeah, yeah. 
by wrist squeezing Lovejoy into submission. <laughs> uh, Lovejoy comes up when the women are alone. I think it's when they went to the bathroom, right? When the men went to the bathroom. Yep. And they're accosting. And uh, Lovejoy has the very charming line, which apparently, again, has worked for him in the past, which is, uh, what say you I lose my face in your tits? Wow. Yeah. Charming, charming, right? That so, was in my vows when uh, Leah and I got married. That was in our vows. <laughs> and will you, Liada, lose your face in Richard's tits? <laughs> and she did, and has many times. Yeah, I mean that's uh, you when you renew your vows. Yeah, that's what you do. I'm I'm rather voluptuous. <laughs> Thanks for asking. I really thought they're gonna go for a, a gore sequence here with him, like breaking his arm, like the fly or something like that. But they decide to save yeah, all the goodness for later. Yeah. So Duffy and Debbie go off to a pool where, you know, Yay. he he charms her some more, tells her, you know, those guys were a bunch of scrotes. Yeah. And uh, and uh, whoopsie, he accidentally bites her and infects her when making out. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's talk about this for a moment. I mean, I love swimming pools at night. Um, I love swimming pools at night in any movie, especially in a horror movie. Uh, but this scene is so strange. She's like really into him because no one has ever defended her before or no one has ever stood up for her before which is really sad mm -hmm. and then when they're making out he gets too aggressive and i really thought he just like tried to kiss her too hard no he bit her neck like a hole yeah in her neck this is a grievous wound that's insane and she still goes back for more <laughs> well you know second chance oh my god know. 184 everybody so we, uh, after this scene, we go back to uh, Nash's weird room, his cell that he has with another roommate who we don't see until later, his gambling addicted roommate. And uh, so oh, we yeah, see. That's such a weird detail. Yes. Do we ever meet that roommate? Yes. He shows up and falls asleep and goes, I'm sorry for interrupting. Oh, yep. yeah. That's so <laughs> weird. What a strange moment. Oh, my God. Oh, one funny thing about Debbie and Duffy is they're they're referencing more famous movies. They're talking about Injustice for All. <laughs> and they're I, I've never seen that, but I just laugh because I'm like, don't reference other movies. Oh, I thought they were talking about the Metallica album. Oh, that. Yeah. Mm. Man, no bass. Ride the lightning. Turn that bass down in the mix so we can't hear it. Garage oh. Incorporated. Uh, Saint Anger. Saint Anger. <laughs> <laughs> um, so in the early um Napster days, yeah, I I downloaded Saint Anger, but it Holy wasn't shit. Saint Anger. It was just another like an entirely different band that I think was trying to promote their own music by saying that it was Saint Anger. So I like <laughs> I downloaded it, I burnt it to CD, and I was like listening to it. I'm like, man, Metallica sounds really different. Oh, I want to do that. <laughs> I want to do that now. Can I do that? Is Napster still around? Yeah, I think so. Cool, dude. Uh, I love when you when you download a song from Amazon. Like you actually pay for an MP3 and it has Napster level mistakes in it. The MP3 will play all the way through, but then there'll be a random clip of a different song <laughs> for a split second. And you're like, I paid for this. <laughs> I, I paid for this. Fuck. I loved in the Napster Kazaa Soul Seek <clears throat> days where you would oh. be like searching for things and you would find like, listen in this one, Radiohead, Metallica. And Nirvana are all on stage together and they play a song together. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah, you, you don't remember you didn't remember those? Yeah. No. Oh, it was a real thing. You you encountered it quite often. Oh no. Well, I remember Bear Share. I, I cleaned up on Bear Share. Oh, that was Bear the one Share. that nobody was using. Wow. So I used that one a lot. That one and, and LimeWire were uh, my jam. Oh, Leah LimeWire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every wow. everything I got from Napster was fucked up in some way. Like, it'd be the whole album as a 43-minute track. Oh, cool. The kids don't know what we're talking about. I know, dude. We're so old that we admit to downloading music. <laughs> There's no repercussions. I, 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 I. Listen, it's fine. All is forgiven. So the next morning uh, at school, at the school clinic, Duffy is is waiting to get you know, looked at, and uh, he can't hold his shit together. 
<laughs> yeah, no, he goes wild. He like knocks over some bookcases. He does some primal screaming. His yes. temples squirt juice. The doctor determines that he has the patience of an average college student. <laughs> I mean, what he really clearly needs is some more beer, <laughs> some more medicine cabinet beer. Just like dump it over your head. <laughs> cool down, mister. Cool down. So, yeah, there's a baseball player there uh, waiting to get looked at. And, of course, because the baseball player is there, he has a bat. And that's where Duffy gets the bat and starts swinging a bat uh, around. It's fucking hilarious. <laughs> oh, my God. He runs out. And then a a, <clears throat> uh, a blood vessel on the side of his head explodes, and he kind of collapses on the ground. Yeah, man, that's some serious freaking STDs right there, boy. <laughs> I mean, this this movie is a warning. Yep, I still can't believe she was kissing him just because he was even sweatier and clammier and shittier looking than ever. Why would she even? And still, his like one paperclip <laughs> earring. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, gotta have yeah. two. Gotta have at least two. Definitely. Uh, so next we see uh, the dean uh, and uh, <laughs> some. I, I want to say another dean lady. I don't know. There's two very important looking people talking about the Halloween bash. They're a little bit worried about it because the kids these days they're so debased. They're always doing the drinking and the drugs and the nudity. Yep. College students. Hey, they got over it. They're not absolutely partying during a pandemic right now or anything. <clears throat> no, college students would never do that. What do you they mean? They would never come to a state called Florida and party and get in close proximity of one another, even though it's really fucking irresponsible. <laughs> yeah, I'll miss you when you're gone, Richard. Hey, I have not been watching the news. I'm not mad at all. <laughs> We do have a scene at some point, like Duffy continues his rampage, like he gets up from his exploded uh, blood vessel, and he starts like <laughs> fucking up a cop car with a road sign. Yes, and he starts looking like a um, like he gets he gets pretty nasty looking. I would describe him as looking like like a Raimi brother who was transforming into a Cenobite. Not quite near dark though. <laughs> Not quite near dark. Near nearly. Uh, there's also a scene with the frat boys uh, playing racquetball together, yeah. which uh, it just it's just the beginning of setting up their homosexual relationship. And what crimes they can do. Oh, boy. Yeah, racquetball is probably the sickest thing they get up to. Well, here's the thing. I'm going to go out and say that um, anybody who plays racquetball is like definitely a sex pervert. Yes. It happens in like every movie. Sex criminal, even. Yeah. Like. I feel like I'm justified in saying this, and, you know, nobody can possibly counter my argument. No one here will. No, no, no. Uh, the audience of two. One of, the, one, of, one of us is you, and the yeah. other is me. So, yeah. <laughs> we're good. It's a full, full broad spectrum representation yeah. right there. So, Debbie isn't feeling too good. We see her sh sweating and shivering and looking genuinely like she ought. And then uh, Nash goes to see Duffy, but he's not home. And he finds his camera. So Duffy borrowed his camera, took a bunch of pictures, which pissed off the monkey, which, you know, good job. So Nash is finally going to find out exactly what Duffy saw, which is a monkey. It is a monkey. I mean, yep. shocker. Yeah. Uh, no, shockma. Shock <laughs> <laughs> you got me. Oh, boy. So, shockma. Uh, <laughs> so Duffy kills a cop who, who tries to help him. Or just tries to stop him from doing something. Or as a security guard, I forget. He fucking no, it's kills a cop. somebody. It's a cop, yeah. I mean, he, he literally pulls a, like, street sign out of the ground. It's pretty <laughs> cool, actually. And then he just starts, you know, he's like, fuck the police. And he starts, like, bashing in the uh, their windshield. He's blameless for this crime. Also, I want to, as always, I'm watching the film uh, on mute as we're talking. And in, during the scene, a cop walks by... Uh, I think it's 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 the math classroom from earlier. I think uh, that has a sign, uh, like a paper sign outside, taped to the 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 wall that says "Geology Seminar Meeting." <laughs> brutal. That's more brutal than any of the violence that happens in this movie. Oh boy, they must be talking about karsts or something. Mm -hmm. Pretty cool. 
the frat boys are on the prowl. They're driving around their convertible, uh, listen to heavy metal. Debbie is going somewhere, probably to get some medical assistance or something. And she unfortunately is spotted by them and they kidnap her. They abduct her. It is honestly, you know, pretty upsetting. Yeah, um, this is a very this- disturbing scene. I mean, we like Debbie a lot, you know. Of course, I mean, of course. even if this is a character we didn't know, it would be uh, upsetting because they they abduct her, they they like pick her up and put her in the car. She's sick. She's obviously not well at all. They force feed her beer and they talk about turning her into a porcupine. It's oh. so gross. Oh boy! Before we get to what they attempt to do to Debbie, Nash calls the doctor or or goes to see the doc. I forget which, and he. Tells him about the photos, and he's like, we got to go to the police. We got to do this. I'll go to the cops. And Doctor completely freaking, like, coerces or guilts or something, just talks him out of going to the police. It's so ridiculous. It's so obvious what he's trying to do. And I just found it fun. Because <laughs> I mean, uh, Nash, he folds like a freaking uh, thing that folds, like like into a small thing that's folded. He like folds a- like a match book. Oh! Yeah, yeah. So I will admit that, you know, we're only about 45 minutes in. So we're about halfway, about exactly halfway through the movie. Don't depress our audience. My notes get very sparse from here on out. Oh, I wish um, mine did. <sighs> I don't lose I want- it till the end. I completely lose it at the end, but I, I'm pretty good. I'm good to go for another <laughs> two or three hours of talking. From us. <laughs> I, well, good. You can You can definitely lead things. I mean, I would say that my my interest definitely lies in the first 45 minutes of this movie. I, I think that nothing, it does not turn bad at any point. Right. But it, it becomes a lot more like just things happening, but not truly bizarre things happening yeah. from here on out. It just becomes, it becomes more of like a, a horror machine, uh, which can be very fun. As we'll talk about. But, I'm very uh, interested to, to hear uh, when we get to the, how we feel about this movie. Because yeah, uh, yeah. it kind of ties into how I feel about this movie. Our three wannabe rapists. Now, they may have been rapists before, but they definitely become wannabe rapists with uh, good old Debbie here. Because she kicks their asses. I mean, she beats the shit out of these guys and bites the shit out of them as well. Which is important, of course, yes. for a disease movie <laughs> like this. But here's the weird part. These guys try to go like David Lynch character bad (laughs) they put weird masks on they put on like pantyhose over their heads one guy puts on a baseball mask and (laughs) catchers uh, catchers yeah yeah. and then they put on strobe lights and then crank the music and they've clearly the three of them have had sex together so many times that none of them think any of this is weird i mean my favorite detail is that one of them puts on a pinky finger claw what the fuck it's like, I'm Freddy, Freddy Cougar, but I'm only one pinky. What the flying fuck? That is completely and utterly insane, dude. Yeah. Well, thankfully, you know, she, she kicks and bites and scratches the heck out of them. Yeah. I love it. I love it. They, she mops the floor with these fucking losers. That's yeah. great. Uh, <sighs> we cut from here to a scene of the, uh, <laughs> the conehead professor and his, uh, <laughs> a uh, salacious student coming back from dinner. Yes. So I guess he just took her out to dinner. They have not done any like sex stuff yet, as we can tell. Um, he asked her, quote, so how'd you like dinner? And then unbuttons her, uh, her shirt and like strokes her cleavage. <laughs> it's all very erotic. Um, a smooth operator. Uh, it doesn't last for long though, because Duffy comes by yep, and like yep. rips off his face. And oh, but it's better. It's a, oh my god! So if we have the typical, what's that noise? I don't know. I'll go check about it. I'll go check it out. And she's like, "Be careful!" And he's like, "I know kung fu." <laughs> he actually fucking says that. It's I miss great. that. Oh, no. It's so good. Uh, but Duffy kills her while the guy's out of the car. He just strangles her to death off camera, and then he kills the shit out of the professor. <laughs> yeah, he like rips his his like lower jaw off. Yeah, they saved some money by just like painting his jaw red and like putting a little gore on it. It's, it's but it yeah. was good. It's it shocking. It's good. It good. I see. I thought Duffy was just jealous and wanted to have sex with the professor again. Yeah, well, like he yeah. has been in the prequel to this movie. This 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 conehead is reserved for one. Yep. Um. Uh. Something. Something. SNL quote from Conehead's movie quote. How'd I do? Something. Something. Hang twenty. <laughs> yeah. 
two detectives we've never seen before show up at Nash's place with a warrant to search. Uh, they're looking for Duffy, apparently, because people have figured out that Duffy is doing all these crimes. <laughs> so it's just such a weird, I don't know what the fuck is happening. To go find Duffy, Nash goes scootering around. We get some nice uh, Miami Vice-like like music here. It's really cool. I love the music. <laughs> Miami Vice, but with the uh, transportation that's only a step above Hawaii Five O. <laughs> In a scene that is very near and dear to my heart, uh, Lauren is leaving. We don't know where she was, but she's leaving somewhere, and it's scary, and it's quiet, and she's in a parking garage, and all of a sudden, this crazy man runs up to her and is like, You forgot this! It was <laughs> a scary librarian with awkward social skills just trying to be helpful so <laughs> awesome you wouldn't know anything about that fuck no dude i'm a cool dude <laughs> <laughs> right after this nash gives her a lift uh he foolishly i don't know why he pretends nothing's wrong i don't know why he has to pretend nothing's wrong it's, everything is wrong just tell her what's going on now she doesn't need to know shit great uh, she goes home, takes a shower. Instead of a nude scene, we get a uh, like a like a murder scene. We get a oh, Debbie's here looking sick, and I just feel so sad for Debbie. Like I love her character, and it's just, she's so uh just sad watching her deteriorate into monster Debbie. Agreed. Um, you know she starts raging at at you know pretty soon thereafter, and Lauren has to clock her in the head with a clock. Um, and uh, it's, it's fat. It's sad. I mean, we yeah. feel it, you know, Debbie, the, the, the actress playing her, I forgot her name already. Uh, but she, uh, you know, she's, she plays a very convincing, very sick woman, uh, but she's not able to shine in the way that she did previously. It's sad. <laughs> it's sad. She still has that 184, man. 184. Sm smarter than Einstein. I love it. Breaking the scale. Nash finally catches up with Duffy. Uh, it doesn't go very well. He uh, meets up with them at his place, and it's it's just ah, more heartbreaking. I never really liked Duffy to begin with, but hey, it's sad when your friend is going to die. It's sad when your friend is saying, kill me, kill me, and then you shoot him in the, you know, to stop him from killing you. It's always sad. But then you realize your friend was Duffy, and it's it's a little better. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is a, this is an acceptable loss. This is a Raimi brother the world didn't need. <laughs> it's like a Fred Raimi. <laughs> oh my god! Uh, Nash calls the doctor to tell him that uh, Duffy's dead, and he's like, "I must do an autopsy." But Nash is like, "Jokes on you, motherfucker! I burned his house down, which we don't see because they couldn't afford it." <laughs> Yeah, he mentions it several times. You know, if you just mention it enough, it's li it's like we've seen it. Uh, the next day at the post op the post bleh, the next day at the uh, newspaper office, we see that uh, there's an avoid the noid poster at the newspaper office because that's that's professional. The noid, like the um, the one who hates the pizzas. Yeah, the pizza pizzas. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, more important than that, though, is back at uh, Debbie and Lauren's place. There's even more details. Okay, you ready for this shit? Yeah. I didn't see everything, so there might be some stuff I missed. But there's a Bartles and James cutout with the two old men. So, mm -hmm. you guys, I know all of you cracked open a Bartles and James at the beginning of this episode, so good for you. Thanks for your support. Uh, there's a Casablanca poster. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a Sherlock Holmes poster. Mm -hmm. And there's an Adamant poster. Nice. I think that's everything I saw. There, there's some other stuff, but not super visible. But I was impressed with uh, yet another pop culture uh, zenith just randomly slapped on the walls of a freaking uh, <laughs> character's room. I mean, these movies that we cover always <laughs> want you to know exactly their point in time in which they came into existence. <laughs> it's like their birth certificate. <laughs> Here's the Avoid the Noid poster. And remember Bartles and James, everybody? Thanks for your support. I think the Noid is maybe responsible for this rage virus. <laughs> well, you know, it is Domino's Pizza, so anything's possible. Call Domino's Pizza and avoid the Noid. <laughs> now, that's when gnarly-looking Debbie attacks. You already said that she clocks her with a clock. I clocks love that. Clocks her with a clock. And then oh they, they, like... Call the doctor. Yeah, they give her to Etheridge. 
And big mistake. Yeah, big they're, mistake. They're thinking that she's going to be fine with Etheridge, but the second Etheridge gets her alone, he's like, "Well, sorry, Debbie, you're going to die, but I couldn't experiment on you instead. So how about it? Uh, well, also you can't consent to this, so I'm just going to say yes. <laughs> so not good. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy. Nash confesses to Lauren about what he did to to Duffy, and they're about to to make out again. And that's when his gambling roommate shows up. <laughs> Classic sequence there. <laughs> it's such a th- fucking throwaway. Why does that exist? <laughs> because it's quirky and fun. I guess. But it's that's, kind that's of like, like Berto the- Lenzi. That's his, that's his contribution to the screenplay. Did we even mention Lenzi at the beginning of this? How He has a frickin- story credit, right? Yeah, he's a story credit. Uh, I, man, he is all film. He's life. Lenzi is life. Lenzi is the lifeblood. The lifeblood yes. is the Lenzi. He's the cure. Did you know that they named the camera lens after him? <laughs> He's like, take off the E. It seem, it makes me seem like really egotistical. Don't call it a Lenzi. Just call it a lens. I mean, he's nothing if not humble. <laughs> Oh my God, those interviews. Oh, I love him. I love him so much. Uh, we do cut to our frat boys, Love, Joey, and company. Yeah, I'm uh, getting bulked up, ready to are, rock and roll and party hardy. They are giggling. They are lifting weights. They are comparing grievous wounds. Jesus uh, Christ. They're like, they're like saying, let's get thrashed or trashed. Oh yeah, they say thrashed. Thrashed? It's, okay. Yeah, dude. It's so good. It's good. And then, uh, oh yeah, and Debbie attacks the doctor, so he did not tie her down properly, which is yeah, good. Yeah, stabs out his eyeballs with the hypodermic, yes. right? Yeah. Yes. Ooh. Uh, let's, let's get to this Halloween Oh party, my god, I'm dude. so ready. Okay. So, mm, yes, uh, this is where things pick back up for me a bit. Yep. Uh, because we have Halloween Town levels of costume buffoonery going on it's here. It's insane. Uh, I've written down a, uh, a, a a menagerie of different uh, monsters and costumes we see here. Uh, so we see we see a gorilla carrying little Bo Peep, a hanged foppish dandy, an axe brained overalled farmer. A gyrating fish woman, question mark, uh, a honky talk smoking skeleton, a giant nose, a split face skeleton guy who has like some like, you know, great setup where he's able to like push a button and his face splits open and there's a skeleton underneath. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's a uh, Jan Svankmeyer esque trio of faces with water faucets for noses, which will come into play later. <laughs> for sure. And my favorite, this one is like. If you're not squinting into the background, you'll miss it. It is someone wearing an Admiral Akbar mask. Yes. With gold, like a gold lame jumpsuit. He's actually being interviewed by one of the uh, reporters. Oh, really? Later. And he has, he's holding his mask. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah. Uh, just, you know, barely avoiding the uh, 20th Century Fox censors here. <laughs> Oh, beautiful. Is that your whole list? Or is, there, is there more? That was my list. There's a couple others who pop up later. Like, there's another Bo Peep, who is a large male Bo Peep, who's different. Um, but that's about all I got. Who, who else you got? There's Boobs on Backwards guy. Oh, yeah, Boobs on Backwards. He's, he's, he's like, dressed as a very voluptuous woman, but he's got the costume on backwards. Yeah. So his, his pink, beautiful breasts are on his back. Listen, he had a few too many medicine cabinet beers before he showed up at the Halloween dance. No, that's just my body type. I was available that weekend. (laughs) (laughs) This party is insane. Like, the the music's pretty cool. You got the 80s freaking lady in uh, spandex rocking. Reminds me of a little bit of the the band in uh, Once Bitten. At mm. that uh, Halloween bash. Uh, but this one's just really, really freaking fun. They bust out the, the smoke machine. They they have like colored lights. And there's so many extras. This movie is packed in this sequence. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. And so you think that with this uh, looming 
pandemic of uh, monkey bite fever, we're going to have this like all out zombie f- festival here. Rage, rage fueled things. <sighs> no, the, the, the five or six participants in this pandemic are going to stay. Their numbers are going to stay that low, but uh, there is going to be some carnage, some very, very gory carnage. Well, listen, I mean, most of the damage is done by the frat brothers and you have yes. to like go through hazing if you want to <clears throat> join the plague club. If you want to join the the three of us have definitely made sweet love to each other repeatedly before moving on. Yeah. Ugh. I mean, which is fine. That's what they should have stayed. They shouldn't have become rapists. <laughs> yeah. They just should have been satisfied being lovers. Ideally. Yes. Ugh, they should have gone to see Dr. Etheridge who could have helped them. <laughs> I'm not sure how. He's his rat tail is not good. But yeah, this this is like just totally insane when they start killing people. Somebody gets hung from the basketball hoop. Well, it's the guy who's they... wearing the hanged man costume. Yes. Yeah. Ironic. Not a good right. look. Not a good idea. Uh, they they attack the guy with the faucet heads. And when they bite him and stab him or whatever, his faucets bleed blood. <laughs> Actual oh. working faucets. Isn't that That's nice? so good. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, they're there and uh, they're trying to get Lauren and Nash. And, of course, Debbie's there, too. And so they actually end up fighting. Lovejoy, I think, is in... Oh, they're all dressed as skeletons, by the way, with the flashing, glowing eyes. Flash, flashing red light eyes, yeah. It's I great. love that. That's so freaking cool. And so, yeah, they, they end up literally ripping Debbie apart. So she doesn't yeah. get away from them in the end that, like, Lovejoy, like, rips her to shreds. Mm-hmm. One of them gets crushed in the bleachers. They have a bleachers that yeah. automatically close, but also don't automatically stop when there's a human body inside. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's just that happens in the faculty as well, right? Yeah. yeah you got to watch out for those uh, oh, bleachers. Man. Only aliens and freaking uh, frat boys don't understand how that works. Yep. Uh, yep. One gets, I think, skewered. I think Nash yeah. is responsible for that one. I yeah, with like he's... a freaking piece of rebar or something yeah, through his head. It's so yeah. good. And then after a tussle, this is Lovejoy, I think, the last one, tussling with Lauren... We have him being decapitated with an axe by yes, well, by our boy Sam Nash. Yeah. I forgot to mention at the party. There's a security guard, a funny security guard who says, "Whatever you're on, don't let me see it." <laughs> <laughs> Which was basically what I told people when I was a security guard. I, I don't mind smelling it. Just don't let me see it. <laughs> when I was a security guard, I told them, "I have no real authority. Don't kill me." <laughs> Uh, so our, our killers are vanquished after, uh, much screaming and silliness and sweating. Yeah. And everything's good to go. We have the aftermath of the party. The movie's over. Definitely nothing else could happen. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> While they're packing up, uh, good old, uh, Lauren's stuff, we have, uh, this nice tranquil music. For some reason, uh, Nash goes down to the car to, to help her pack the car, but he gives her like a goodbye kiss, even though he's just going downstairs. Liet and I were like, what are they doing? Is what? They love each other very much. But uh, she gets attacked because surprise, surprise, Dr. Etheridge is there. There's one more and- Bo Peep left in this movie. <laughs> it's Bo Svensson. <laughs> I wonder if Bo of uh, the Great Legion Podcast Network is related to Bo Svensson. I'll sh- I shall have to ask him. Give me Bo or <laughs> give me death. Just, just say Bo to drugs. Just say, just say Bo as you're th- <laughs> thrown off a balcony and become a rag doll. Okay, so one of the final gags of this movie is so weird. I don't oh understand what they're going for. So they throw... This dude down the middle of this apartment complex balcony, like the whole, like the circle uh, courtyard, throw him <clears> down <throat> in it, which is amazing because basically that's every Florida apartment yeah. building. We all have this space that we think is going to be safe from a hurricane. So we build this like circle well, to I drown think, in. You know, what? Yeah. I think we're now confirmed this is off campus housing. Why is that? Because it's off campus. It's like this apartment building that is clearly not run by the campus. I'm confused. 
Why? It's, we have Floridians do it different. Do you do different? So, we do different. So they, we do throw different this, they throw this motherfucker off the balcony. He falls to the ground. And oh my God, is he still alive? He appears to be projectile spitting from his mouth. He landed on the sprinkler. And so every few seconds, the sprinkler sprays out of his mouth. It is so stupid. I don't know what they were going for. Well, you know what? Like, now, now all of his saliva is in the ground, and that grass is going to grow to be beautiful. I don't know, it's like fruits and vegetables. And It'll now- be angry, angry grass, and uh, <laughs> it's real dumb. I well, love it. The like, do you have bunnies in Florida? Oh yeah. Oh so. Oh, oh my god, those bunnies! Oh this god. is this is a Night of the Lepus uh, <laughs> prequel, prequel. Yeah. post cool. My favorite part is that after this, I mean, the sprinkler gag is so fucking funny. It's <laughs> so so goofy. Um, my favorite part is that they after doing that, they're just like let's get out of here, and they do like don't bother <laughs> calling the cops. They just drive away. <laughs> they just get in the car and go. It's it, so good. Yeah, we have like a freeze frame as the credits play over oh, the shit. Wow, this is uh, this was something else. Mm-hmm. So you see, folks, you didn't have to be scared because other than that sprinkler uh, spraying his spittle everywhere and doing the whole rabbits eating the grass thing, the tainted grass, you don't have to worry about this pandemic. It's over. Be very, very afraid of the cute little gigantic bunnies. Yep. Come to my window. <laughs> I'll be home soon. I'll be Bo soon. <laughs> save my beer. Save my beer. It's a red ass <laughs> world. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! So that's it, folks. We did it. Let's let's talk about what well, this movie. How do we like it, <laughs> Jeffrey? How do you like this movie? Well, Richard, I have to say, uh, a turd is a turd is a turd, <laughs> and. I like me uh, some turds. Yeah, um, yeah, I like this one quite a bit. I'm surprised that it's one that is not talked about more frequently. I don't think this is one that I was aware of until maybe last year. Uh, really? I think maybe because somebody posted about it in our in the the Doom Show group. I don't even know. I mean, it, it was I, I definitely like heard about. It. I was like, oh, that sounds interesting. And I checked it out. And it, it's it's very much prime late 80s Italian horror. You know, it has a slightly different vibe than the ones that we've covered in the past because it is a little bit more genuinely American in some ways in terms of the, you know, the live live sound recording and the American, definitely all American actors. But it still has that, you know, touches of that surreal uh euro goodness that we love so much i think that it it does for me it becomes a little bit rote in that second half not in a bad way just in kind of like a you know for our podcasting purposes it's not super like there's a lot of super interesting stuff to talk about but i think it is a lovely film one that is better made than than you know most from this period of the same caliber uh, and uh, one that I will be revisiting frequently. How do you nice. feel? <clears throat> nice. I like it. Um, I looked up in the group and a lot of people looks like uh, David S. Hasino mentioned primal rage. I was going to say, I feel like that this is a, this is a, a David jam. Yeah. Uh, Chris Davies, Ro- uh, Chris Davies Rowan as well. So yeah, we're in good company here. Mm-hmm. I really enjoy this. Um, I rented this. When I was uh, starving for Italian horror back in the early 2000s, I actually found that videotape. Uh, not Probably not the same one you have, because this was in Tampa. <laughs> uh, but they had a copy of it um, at uh, Hollywood Video. This is the same Hollywood Video that had uh, the... Is it the Devil's Daughter? Was it, I think it's the Devil's Daughter version of um, The Sect. And I, I rented The Sect mm. and uh, this one around the same time. And I liked both very much. Uh, but this feels like one of the best post-dubbing Italian horror films. It's just so polished. I don't know why. It just flows really nicely. It has less silly shit to like break your brain like Ghost House or something. Yeah. It just feels like a real movie. So I think uh, that's probably one of the reasons why Warner Brothers picked it up. Other than uh, Carlo Rambaldi was like, <laughs> yo, my kid made a movie, y'all. Please. <laughs> 
Could I mean, you please I, distribute it for me? I would argue that it is tricking us into thinking it's a real <coughs> movie and that it definitely is not a real movie. Uh, but, you know, it does, a, it does a good enough job convincing for yeah. a moment. Uh, I love that it's a secret Halloween movie. I kind of want to sneak this in our Halloween viewing next year. Mm-hmm. Uh, Lietta was actually impressed by the costumes, as as was I. Yeah. Uh, we were watching this. Uh, Florida movies are always great. <laughs> I wish more stuff was shot nearer to Tampa, but I'll take what I can get, especially when, for some reason, all college campuses in Florida look the fucking same. I have no idea why. The same architect, like, made a, a mint off of Florida. Uh, lots of 80s craziness with all the pop culture shit. Just like you said, the, the set designer was just told, make this important to now to the kids throw an elf in throw a noid in <laughs> call it a day oh my god oh avoid the alf and the pizza no something don't uh yes and it does get very by the numbers you mentioned that earlier where it just is a horror machine and yes this is going to hit all those beats but that's not a bad thing we like nope. the numbers exactly this movie is gory and never boring yes Never boring. Um, and I really like the ending stalking scene with uh, with Lauren being uh, chased around the the locker room and yeah. just and the whole thing with Debbie is just so crazy good mm-hmm. and sad. So, man, yeah, this is, this is quite a winner here. Good, good job, sir. Good job, um, Vito- Vittorio. Vittorio Rambaldi. Good job, Bo Svensson. <laughs> Of course, uh, Spaghetti Nightmares, our illustrious tome here, uh, has something to say about rage. Uh, Rage Furia Primitiva, a.k.a. Primal Rage, uh, gives a nice uh, plot here. Doesn't reveal the ending like like they do with all the giallo in the back of the book, where they they just spoil everything. Mm -hmm. Uh, But this says, the director is the son of the special effects wizard Carlo Rambaldi. Some good effects, as expected, but the plot and narration are really C-class. Narration? Yep. Science fiction horror. (laughs) Narration? I don't know what that means. There's no narration in this movie. (laughs) No, I think they just meant the narrative. Okay. Science fiction horror and ecological film debut for Carlo Rambaldi's son. That's actually one of their nicer reviews. (laughs) Calling something C-class is like a compliment from them. These fuckers. COVID class. Teaching you to wash your frickin' monkeys. Wash your monkeys in a can of open (laughs) beer and they will be immune. If we can have listeners take away anything from this episode, I want it to be that. Yeah, forget six feet away. This is Florida, so six flamingos. Stay six <laughs> flamingo lengths away from everybody. Do flamingos have red asses? <laughs> they, they, I almost said they do when I'm done with them, but I'm not going to say that. Cut that out. <laughs> I just, I, I'm cutting that out with scissors, <laughs> but then I'm taping it back in. <laughs> Cut them out with some pizza scissors. Oh, well, Jeffrey, thank you for joining me. Uh, you're so welcome. I hope that I didn't uh, give you anything by being nope. in such close proximity to you. Yes. Um, Unprotected but if, Skype. But like. if, if I did give you something, I hope it kills you quickly. <laughs> promise? No, no promises. Mm. All right. Folks, thanks for listening. Take care and watch out because monkey bites, but not monkey bone. <laughs> but you could also monkey bone. I don't care. <laughs> Must be Florida. Hello, this is The Doom Show is a proud member of the Legion Podcast Network. Please check out the other podcasts on legionpodcasts.com. If you'd like more Hello, This is the Doom Show, go to hellodoomshow.podomatic.com or go to doomedmoviethon.com for the archives. If that's still not enough, go to at doomedmoviethon on Twitter. You can write in to Hello, This is the Doom Show, use the email doomedmoviethon at gmail.com. Doom Show episodes are available on record and 8-track cassette.